Lab schedules are informative for pricing and services, but these descriptions can fall short of actually guiding you to the right package. So in this session, we're going to go over what is a digest and which do I choose? So what are digests and why are they important? Broadly, chemical leaches or digest is a solution that you have chosen to extract the metal or metals of interest from your geologic sample, rock, till, soil, sediments. It's important to get the digest right because exploration geochemistry is about signal detection and knowledge of the environment the deposit of interest is in and the goals of the study will help in the selection process. So when we think about the stages of a geochemical program, what are we actually talking about? We're talking about program design, which includes the orientation survey, sampling, sample preparation and analysis, data management, display and review, and then the final data. And these steps are crucial to get correct before any data interpretation and integration occurs. Then to go over analytical methods for different media, it's all about the right combination of sample type and analytical method. So for example, if your objective is to look at primary dis dispersion and petrochemistry, you'd be looking at rocks, you're gonna be using a four acid or a, or a lithium metamorate fusion. Uh, if you're looking at dispersion, you're gonna be looking at um, sediments and soils. If it's mechanical, we'll look at a four acid or an aqua regia. If you're looking at something that's more of a hydromorphic, dispersion that we're going to be using an aquaregia or and or a partial extraction. If the if quantitative information is required, a total method should definitely be used. But for applications where contrast and reproducibility are important, a partial extraction is going to be su sufficient. So the next question that we're going to be asking ourselves is which signal are you interested in? Is it gonna be the endogenic signal or the geochemical signature of the matrix? Or is it gonna be the exogenic signal, which is the geochemical signal of introduced ions or elements? So for example, the endogenic component, that's gonna be what we see here in this, this green bubble. And the exogenic is gonna be what we see um, in the, in the blue, and those are the added ions. So something, say, for example, if you're looking at um, uh, copper um, uh, being related to um, the iron or manganese oxides, maybe that's something that we're gonna want to be uh, looking at. So maybe we're looking at a, a leach that's gonna be looking at some of these absorbed um, ions. Whereas if we're looking at completely an endogenic component, we're looking at, you know, what is the lithogeochemistry, then that's something that we're going to be looking at that's going to be, you know, more in these, these four acid or the total uh, fusion methods. Following with this, how does the endogenic or exogenic signal translate into which digest that you're going to be, uh, you're going to be using? So a stronger extraction uh, will dissolve more of the endogenic component but this in turn can overwhelm the subtle exogenic component. So just something just to keep in mind, um, but really if you're trying to do a study whereby you're looking at say, um, I need to digest everything because I'm really interested in all of what's in the resistate minerals or I'm interested in doing a lithogeochemical study, that's when you're gonna be wanting to use at least a four acid, if not um, the, the uh, fusion. If you're, on the other hand, if you're interested in, say, looking at the what's been absorbed onto a manganese or um, an um, amorphous uh, iron oxide, then potentially you could be looking at doing uh, a, more, a weaker leach, something more along the, the lines of um, that are targeting those. Um, but I would say something that's important to consider as well, you know, we have on here things like MMI um, and enzyme leach, but it's really important, you know, these are proprietary to uh, specific companies. And it's really important to understand what exactly are the assets that they're using, because without knowing that, then you really just have this black box technique and you're not exactly sure what's being actually dissolved other than what the lab is telling you. Something also to consider are trap sites. 
or basically where do the elements um, or the mobile ions get stuck. Um, this would be components of a sample medium that have the ability to absorb or otherwise trap mobile ions. So they would host the exogenic signal and could be targeted chemically. Uh, organic matter, for instance, um, iron and manganese uh, hydroxides, clays, where you have some absorption, carbonates, silica gels. Um, so in this case, uh, this table is really just showing you, uh, for instance, on a manganese oxide, it has great potential to hold on to copper 2+, uh, cobalt 2+. Um, you also have amorphous iron oxides. Gertite can hold on to uh, mobile ions um, all the way through to these uh, humic substances. And, and having tables like this and reading up on, in the literature to see you know, what could be potentially concentrated when you have specific minerals in, in places or you're in, say, an organic environment, all these things are really important because this will also, in a way, let you know as well if you have um, if you have anomalies that are real or, or perhaps some false anomalies because they're just congregating uh, to, um, to places where they're attracted to. As always, there's complications. Uh, so things to consider would be sample preparation. So for instance, if drying, um, if the temperature of drying exceeds 40 degrees Celsius, absorbed metals could become incorporated into mineral structures, and therefore you can't um, use a weak leach. Uh, anaerobic conditions and samples can change element availability. Results are always influenced by the sample matrix. So buffers are often used to maintain a constant pH during the extraction reaction, but it's possibly difficult to maintain this pH across different soil types. So note that unbuffered extractions can be compromised by also the carbonate content of the sample. Some analytical con uh, considerations would be the degree of extraction depends on the time, the temperature, that influences the rate and the reagent strength. And so all these have to be carefully controlled. Reabsorption of metals after dissolution, say on glassware, sediments, organics, and there could be um, even batch effects. So all in all, this is to say that QAQC is essential, especially when dealing with these, um, these partial extractions. Some preventative measures that you can take, just record as much information as possible. So for example, soil pH, final pH of the leach solution, um, always the application of the right leach in the right environment, know your chemistry of the environment that you're working in and apply suitable digest. Don't be surprised also if the results are ambiguous or difficult to interpret because typically when we have talks um, and papers that are presenting case studies, these have all worked. And it's very rare that people want to talk about things that haven't worked. Um, so just really keep that in mind. Always use a lot of QC samples, um, including standards and the partial leach work to monitor. And if you're going to be doing partial leaches, it's really important to run a high quality aquaregia based uh, ICPMS survey in parallel or a four acid. So having that uh, near total or close to total digest is going to be very important. I hope this is a helpful uh, supplement towards uh, lab schedules and good luck in your future studies.